In recent years, the call for a federalist government in the Philippines has been gaining momentum with growing support from those who decry inefficiencies in the current political system and advocate for a more competitive economy. Proponents of federalism argue that it could drive equal growth across the Philippines, a challenge that has long plagued the country as much of its growth has been concentrated in Metro Manila. The benefits of a federalist government have been observed in many countries around the world, but the the path to implementing such a system in the Philippines is not without its challenges. Despite the push for renewed implementation, overall reforms necessary for a federalist government to take hold have yet to materialize. This is because the issue of federalism is complex and multifaceted, with both advantages and disadvantages that need to be carefully considered. To begin this discussion, it is important to first understand what federalism actually means and its history in the Philippines. Rather than immediately debating whether the Philippines should adopt a federalist system, we should take the time to examine the concept of federalism in depth and explore its potential impact on the country's political, social, and economic landscape. Federalism is a system of government where power is divided between a central government and smaller regional governments, often called states or provinces. This division of power is meant to promote local autonomy, encourage economic growth, and ensure a more equitable distribution of resources across the country. Countries like the United States, Germany, and Australia have successfully adopted federal systems, and they've managed to balance power between the central government and their states or provinces. But what about the Philippines? Will federalism work for them? Well, before we get into that, let us first dive into the history of federalism in the Philippines. The debate over federalism in the Philippines dates back to even a century ago, but the most important points in time should be seen through the scopes of the 1970s, sought greater autonomy, and eventually led to the creation of the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao in 1989. Since then, various political leaders have called for federalism as a means of promoting greater regional autonomy and reducing conflicts between different groups in the country. In 2016, President Rodrigo Duterte made federalism a key part of his political agenda, arguing that it could help address issues such as poverty, corruption, and inequality. However, implementing a federal system in the Philippines is not without its challenges, including the need to draft a new constitution, establish regional governments, and address concerns over corruption, regional disparities, and conflict. The current political system in the Philippines is a unitary presidential constitutional republic, where the president serves as both the head of state and the head of government. In this system, the central government holds most of the power, while the provinces have limited autonomy. Power is centralized in the national government, with local governments playing secondary role in governance. While this system has been in place since the country's independence, it has been criticized for being inefficient and contributing to various social, economic, and political challenges. Over the years, this centralized system has led to numerous issues, including unequal distribution of resources, regional underdevelopment, and a lack of representation for marginalized communities. Critics argue that the unitary system concentrates power in the capital city of Manila, leading to neglect of outlying regions and perpetuating an uneven economic landscape. It is due to these arguments that both President Rodrigo Duterte and President Bongbong Marcos have both supported the move towards federalism. One critic of President Marcos, however, is that the 1987 constitution may not fit well with a federal system of government. But the connection between the constitution and federalism is quite a hurdle to undertake. What we must first understand, however, is the arguments for federalism. Federalism has several benefits under its sleeves, but we will limit it to four major reasons why it is good for the Philippines. First, there is a notion called regional autonomy. Under a federal system, regional governments could have more control over their resources, policies, and legislation. This increased autonomy could empower local leaders to address the unique challenges and needs of their communities without having to rely on the central government's approval or intervention. One example of how regional autonomy could benefit the Philippines under a federalist government is in the area of natural resource management. With the country's abundant natural resources, a federalist system could would allow regional governments to have greater control over how these resources are used and managed. 
Following regional autonomy, there is also a notion called decentralization of power. Federalism would help to decentralize power, reducing the concentration of authority in Manila. This shift could lead to better governance, increased efficiency, and reduced corruption. Thirdly, equitable distribution of resources. In a federal system, resources would be distributed more evenly across the country, ensuring that each region receives a fair share of the national budget. This equitable distribution could lead to improved infrastructure, better access to education and healthcare, and overall economic growth in underdeveloped regions. Finally, by encouraging regional development. By allowing regions to manage their resources and create policies tailored to their specific needs, federalism could stimulate regional development and promote economic growth. This growth could, in turn, create more job opportunities and improve the overall quality of life for citizens in each region. Now, as we discuss the many benefits federalism can bring to a country, there are also reasons why a fully adopted system has not been put in place. Simply because federalism has its own disadvantages. First, there will be an increase in the risk of increased corruption. Critics argue that federalism could lead to increased corruption as regional governments may be more susceptible to patronage, nepotism, and other corrupt practices. This risk could undermine the intended benefits of decentralization and regional autonomy. The Philippines is still one of the most corrupt countries in the entire world, especially at the local government levels. Giving more autonomy to these governments may lead to a loss of government revenues and, ultimately, the erosion of public trust. Secondly, a potential for regional disparity. While federalism aims to promote equitable distribution of resources, there is a risk that some regions may become wealthier than others, leading to increased disparities between regions. One very good example in this case is India, a country that sees some of its states become far better in terms of investments in education, healthcare, and infrastructures, whereas others are still plagued with poverty and inefficiencies. Thirdly, there is also a problem related to administrative and financial burdens. The transition to a federal system could require significant administrative and financial resources. Creating new regional governments, drafting new legislation, and implementing new policies could be both time-consuming and costly. These burdens could potentially strain the country's budget and delay the benefits of federalism. Finally, the risk of regional conflicts also rises. As regions gain more autonomy, there is a possibility that disputes over resources, territory, or political power could arise between regional governments. These conflicts could potentially destabilize the country and impede progress. One key thing to note here is that there are a growing number of voices from some critics out there that have argued that this shift is primarily a political maneuver to consolidate power and could exacerbate existing problems such as corruption and regional disparities. The ongoing territorial disputes in the South China Sea could further complicate the implementation of a federal system in the Philippines. While the concerns surrounding federalism in the Philippines are valid, it's worth looking at the examples of successful federal systems in other countries. As mentioned earlier, countries like the United States, Germany, and Australia have adopted federal systems with great success. These countries demonstrate that federalism can work when implemented properly and with the necessary safeguards in place. For the Philippines to successfully implement federalism, several factors must be considered. First, the country must have a strong legal framework. Secondly, there must be accountability and transparency. Thirdly, a balanced distribution of resources. And finally, there must also be a conflict resolution mechanism. So, will federalism work for the Philippines? The answer isn't a simple yes or no. While federalism has the potential to address many of the country's long-standing political and economic challenges, it also comes with risks and concerns that must be carefully considered. Ultimately, the success of federalism in the Philippines will depend on how it is implemented and whether the necessary safeguards are put in place to ensure that the system is transparent, accountable, and equitable. If the country can learn from the experiences of other federal nations and adopt a well-designed federal system, federalism could indeed offer a promising path towards a more prosperous and inclusive future for the Philippines. 
Furthermore, given the inefficiencies of the current political system, there is a clear need for reform in the Philippines. While the shift of a federal system could potentially address some of these issues, it is essential to carefully consider the specific design and implementation of such a system to avoid exacerbating existing problems. Alternative solutions such as strengthening local governments within the current unitary system or implementing electoral reforms to encourage greater political competition should also be explored. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.